Ah, ta -da. So today we've got an opportunity to look at the X32, the Behringer mixer, very nice mixer. I remember this uh, seeing it first time a couple years ago where Michael was using it uh, on some of his uh, shows and uh, assembling PA systems. One of the most impressive things about this um, mixer was that he could control it wirelessly from, from the other side of the room and uh, also all, all the faders are motorized and a uh, very impressive piece of equipment uh, and so obviously I don't own it and the rating will co go down to Michael so what would you say how would you say rate it what's the best thing um, about it what's the worst <coughs> thing the best thing about it is its price compared to what it's able to do so this is probably the most budget thing you could get for the stuff that it allows you to do so not only is it just a uh, a 32 channel mixer with some additional inputs um, it also works as a sound card so you can record multi-track everything it allows you to uh, operate it via computer or telephone via this modem that's hooked up to it each channel has a built-in equalizer a gate uh, a compressor and then it allows you to send it to 16 uh, buses that you can configure any way you want and on the back here if you look on the back so you've got your 32 inputs and then it's got 16 outputs that you can use and then a really cool thing about it is you can really kind of reroute things and configure them the way you want you can have one channel coming in on one input but then showing up on many different inputs here and each input could be you know treated differently yeah all right, it's got DCA gr groups that allow you to have under one fader a group of inputs. So you can have, for example, on one fader all your drums, so you can kind of... All right, so when you switch to one fader, it opens up. Yeah, so basically at some point today, I'll be configuring it for tonight the way I like it, and then I'll go through with you how I'm doing what I'm doing and why I'm doing okay. it. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a track. Maybe it's best if I play a track that's not known so you don't get copyrighted. And I'm just going to be listening to one side for the moment. And just hear if, if all the speakers are working. So basically, this mixing desk has inputs on the back, but it also has the capability of having exactly the same type of converters on stage. So at the moment, we're using these eight of the internal ones, but all the rest are disabled, and we're going to use the ones that are on stage. It's all connected via one cable, which is a Cat5 type of connection. And this goes to this, these two pieces of equipment here. So the, the inputs that you see here are again here <laughs> on stage. Yeah, so we're gonna, all the microphones will go in here and then via this Cat5, they'll go transfer to the mixing desk, yeah? And, all, and then all the outputs, so the outputs that we're using here, they go to the amplifier racks. So down here, we've got the amplifiers that run the front of house speakers. These are PKN, uh, they're like touring grade amplifiers, Hungarian actually, <laughs> uh, very good, very expensive. And so, so th from the converters, it goes to this unit up here, which splits the signal to its different bands. So we've got this amplifier that runs these subs. At, so the cutoff point is around 150 Hertz. The, this amplifier runs two mid speakers, which are one here, one here. I think they go from 150 to around 1000 hertz. And then this top one runs the tweeters from 1000 upwards to 20k. And then this rack here runs the monitors. So we've got four inputs going to four different speakers, but they are also split into two bands. So 
this amplifier runs the t tweeters for all of them, and this amplifier, which has basically four amplifiers built in, so there's this one. This one runs the mids, which go also to around a thousand, and I think we cut them at around sixty or something, to don't so we don't kill the kill them with with base con base content. Yeah, and and that's basically uh, roughly the whole system. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to tune the system. What that means is that every room has its nuanced character, which is the effect of the material that's used to build all the walls and the ceiling and the, the, the length, the height, the width of the room, which causes certain lengths of frequencies are amplified because of some some lengths in the room yeah so like reson resonation resonation yeah so those are going to be amplified by the room and we're going to have to find which ones those are and uh, and turn them down so we can't make them ring out as long as they do but what we can do is make them quieter so they they're, they're more like all the other frequencies in the room in a sense all right so uh, i just like using a microphone to do that. So how accurate this is, it's more t t the way I've learned doing it. There's a few ways of doing it. I've tried different methods, but I like using this method because it's very consistent. I just use my voice and the same microphone over and over again. Okay, so the way I do it is I will patch. So I'll be using two types of EQs for it. So a graphic EQ. So I'm just gonna set for the output stage uh, oh, one thing about this mixer, which is quite annoying, is that the quality of all these faders and knobs isn't very good. So there had to be something, something that makes Some the price, <laughs> price what it is. I think the newer ones are a little bit better quality, the ones that came out a year well, ago. I've, so I've seen a video of a guy fixing some of the faders yeah, himself. I'm, it's yeah, possible I'm, to do. Yeah, I can imagine, but I'm just not that yeah. tech savvy. All right, so. What I'm going to do, oh, I'll show you how I like doing it the most comfortable way. So I'll take a stand. So the r why am I using this particular microphone? Because almost all the microphones I'll be using tonight are either 58s or 57s, which have roughly the same characteristics. Yeah, the, the microphones that I won't be using uh, the, the other microphones I'll be using is just going to be a few and they won't be they won't have an effect that much uh, to what I'm trying to do with this one. So the, so the microphones that will be the loudest, so the vocal mics, they need to be kind of tuned with the system so they don't bring too much, you know, we don't get fit feedback issues. So basically, as you can, as you can hear, if I, if I start putting this up, uh, the game, one, two, one, two, one, two, at some certain point there's going to be feedback, okay? So the way, the way we're going to deal with it is we're going to find the first maybe eight f uh, frequencies that are really kind of not working with this room, are working too much. Okay, so on this graphic EQ, it actually has an analyzer also, so we can actually see what's going on. One, two. Yeah, so we can see 200. So we're going to be pulling down every next frequency that will show up, we're going to pull down less. So the first one that shows up, we're going to pull down by minus six, for example, and the rest less than that. One, two. One, two. Yeah, 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 that's better. Yeah, 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 uh -huh. So when I get to this point, I like switching to the parametric EQ that allows me to kind of sweep through the frequencies and keep, keep finding more. One, two. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want to do too much because we're just going to cut everything. Yeah, so we want to get to a certain point and then do the rest EQing particular instruments. Yeah. All right. So, so now we can have a listen to a track and see, see how it feels. Oh, 
I know it's one of the funniest things, like acoustic engineers make all these noises, but all of them are for a purpose, kind of like dolphins would do, yeah? So there's particular movements. And so for example, there's a region that I'm interested in finding out if there's something, something bouncing out. So I'll go like, I can kind of observe and listen if in that frequency range there's a particular frequency that will jump out, but I can't hear anything like that. Or I would do things like for this upper range just to see if I'm starting to get any feedback. So all of these sounds work for a particular range. Uh, and that's so a lot of engineers will go one, two, because one, two has in its sound some frequencies that are very interesting um, and they are interesting because a lot of inaccuracies and problems that occur occur in the range that one has so around here yeah and that's to do with the size of of a, of a particular room so let's say a hundred hertz has a length of about three meters forty which is roughly which is roughly the ceiling size. So, so a shorter one will have a little bit higher. So from, from, from 100 to 200 hertz are the lengths of the uh, frequencies, the, the wavelengths of those frequencies are, very, are problematic because of the, the ceiling to, to floor size. Yeah, so, so those will resonate. Yeah, so we need to find them. And two is good because it's, it, it has that clicky, tickiness to it. So with one, two, we get a lot of information coming in. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I can still hear stuff going on, but what happens is if we do it too much, we're going to kind of kill the sound a little bit. What I mean by killing sound is we're just going to do too many cuts. So every cut brings in some sort of radical change to how a particular frequency changes its, its uh, phase when it, when it gets filtered through an EQ. So if we do too many cuts, not only are we going to have so much less of the signal coming out of the f filter, it's also going to be quite radically changed and, and I would say lose its natu natural character. So we don't want to do too much of it. And <clears throat> what happens is once people fill in the room, all these inaccuracies kind of, <laughs> they disappear because you don't have so much stuff bouncing off the walls. Humans act kind of as a diffuser, not kind of, they act as a diffuser. So because they're random in the room, they will m allow the, f the waves to kind of bounce all over the room in a very random fashion, just how a diffuser would do. Or they are basically diffusers. Okay, so we've gotten to this point. Now what I'm gonna do is, before the band arrives, I'm already gonna configure this mixing desk the way I like it. So from, from one till 16, we're just gonna do all the instruments. And then from 17, I'm not sure how many vocalists will appear, but I'll do it universal. So I'll set up four mics. We've got one, two, three, and maybe a singing drummer which I really don't like when that happens, but they do happen. For some reason, I like setting vocal mics to plus 30 dB. And the reason is someone showed me with this mixing desk that if you get a hot signal coming in on the preamps, even if it clips, it will sound better than, a, than quite a, a, a low input and also a high input uh, gain allows me to send quite good signal to the monitors so because I do most of the gigs myself so I have to think about monitors as well as front of house helps me have enough signal to be able to send everywhere without having to kind of push the master faders for the buses so we're gonna do from 1 to 10 for example drums so a really cool feature of this mixing desk is these nice uh, windows that you can you can name and color them the way you want to so we're just going to do that now okay so i'm going to do we're going to do two kicks the reason is i'm going to be using two different types of microphones especially for metal it's it's a really good way of doing stuff uh, i'll just show you which mics they are 
Okay, so we're using these two microphones for, for the kick drum. This is a Shure Beta 91A, which is a condenser microphone. And this is a Beta 52, also by the same company, um, which will be used uh, is a, is a dynamic microphone. We're going to be using this for the majority of the sound of the, of the kick drum, which is all the high frequencies down to almost the lowest ones but I do like to cut it at a point where I can kind of feel down to the chestiness of the kick in a sense and then have this just for your sub. And the reason is that in metal, when you have really fast, when the kick plays really fast, the length of time between the two kicks isn't enough for even one cycle of a very low frequencies to develop. So what you wanna do is kind of think of of this one as the microphone that will allow the the majority of the kick to go like really fast after each other. And then I have this for the really low end that will exist below the bass guitar. And where I cut them kind of also is dependent on the room. And I sometimes flip the phase also on the sub one. Sometimes I allow them to overlap a tiny bit. And with the phase button, you can have the area where they overlap boost and sometimes that gives a really cool effect. All right, so we're gonna have two kicks. I'm just, okay, so kick, kick. So one of these is gonna have to have phantom because this is a condenser mic, yeah? It's quite interesting mic, bro. What, what's the frequency you said they're recording this on? So, no, this is like a full range, but, full it, range, okay. but, but it, both of them are full range. They just sound different. So sometimes for like rock music or like reggae, I don't even like using this one. I'll use this one. It sounds warmer. And also, so sometimes I'll use the majority of the sound this and just leave the, leave the click for this one. And sometimes I'll do the opposite in that I'll use the majority of the kick sound from this one and just leave the sub on this one. It kind of depends on the genre and what, what feels right. Do you and do any EQ on this one? Well, like cutting uh, notch or? I'll, sh I'll show you. But the interesting thing about this particular microphone is that it's got a built-in EQ. So it cuts your mids, what you'd normally be doing, you know, on okay. the thing. Yeah, it's, it, they kind of thought it through. So it's like, so once you click, click that, I really don't feel the ne necessity of doing that dip around 500 or 400, which people do. Very clever. Yeah. Very clever. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to do two snares. Kind of the same idea, but I'm I'll, I'll be using two microphones for the snare drum. And I'll be using this microphone, with, which is just an a normal 57, which is practically the same microphone as that one in its characteristic, just looks a little bit different. So this one is going to be looking at the snare from the top to get the initial kind of s slam of the snare. And then this is a Beta 57, which, which is different from this one in that it's more directional and has a little bit of a more brighter sound and this is going to be at the in the bottom of the snare and it's just going to be picking up the the rattle of the snares yeah and what we're going to have to do is something that it's is disputed sometimes it kind of depends on how far each one away is from the membrane but we're going to want to flip the phase on this one because if you imagine the sound wave coming in um, because this one is is the opposite direction as the other one it receives the uh, opposite phase you need to flip the phase yeah. there's a button to do that on this but I sometimes notice that you want to kind of do the same with the with the kick when you're using two kicks even if you're splitting phase uh, if you're even if you're cutting it so that, that the frequencies don't really overlap, it sometimes works very well. Sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't hear the difference as much. Uh, can, you, can you just flip the phase? Or no, can, unfortunately, you... I wish this, I really wish this wasn't a, a 180. I wish this was a knob where you could flip it oh, okay. uh, smoothly, yeah, smoothly yeah. but I, I've, I've, I haven't seen that on, on the mixing desks okay. I've used. It would have been great because then you could really kind of adjust, precise. adjust precisely. Yeah. Because, because the phase would also depend on, on the, on the, how far away from the membrane is. So, you know, a slight difference would, would make 
the phase oh, a right. tiny bit different than 180. Yeah, so, so 180 would only be if these were exactly the same lengths away from the membrane. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's basically just flipping and listening if it's doing what you think it should be doing, yeah? yeah. To a degree. Be very so, careful so, with so, adjusting. So, so you need to know the, the theory, but you end up, because, you know, you're, we're not scientists, we're just fucking, you know, <laughs> technicians. So, <laughs> so we kind of know the science behind it, but we're, what we're really doing is just flipping stuff around and hoping it's gonna Work. come out well. All right, so, so those two. So now, so we're going to do those two also, and then we're going to do toms. So I know with toms, I think they're going to bring three, so I'm just going to set up, set up for three toms. I doubt they're going to bring more than that. Not practical. So then we're going to do hi-hat, and then we're going to do two overhead microphones. and I. I'm not sure that I brought something for the hi-hat in this, but, but basically because I'm intending to record multi-track, I'd like to have, I'd like to capture the hi-hat also. But now I'm thinking, did I bring enough microphones to do it? So let me go check. I, and I have, all right. So that's done. Okay. So remember when I told you, oh, another thing would be, I'm just gonna color this. So let's say I'm gonna do green for that. Okay, and then this DCA group, I'm gonna group these drums together like that. And then I'm going to have them on this fader and I'm going to make, I'm going to re make this green. I'm going to maybe put like a drum icon. Yeah, like that. <coughs> and next to it, so I'm going to send these drums from, from the snare to the top, all the snares to, uh, I'm going to send them to an effect. So I'm going to want to have a really short, kind of depends on the room, but I'm going to ha want to have a, a tiny bit, bit of reverb on those things, not a lot. So that's on channel two. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to pre-send them. And then what I'm going to do is have this second DCA, the second DCA going to this, to this bus. So I'm going to have this reverb from the uh, drum kit next to the drum kit on this DCA. All right. So once we've done that, then we're going to have some, uh, let's say 11, 12, we'll do bass. So bass, again, we're going to have two signals for bass. We're going we're gonna to capture the DI from the bass, and then we're also going to mic it up. All right. And then we're going to have two guitars, and then maybe someone's going to bring like a backing track, which is, which is highly likely from what I remember these bands do. So you've got reverb to drums and guitars as well as... The uh, no, so I'm not going to... So I'm only going to have effects on the drums and I'm, I'm going to have effects on the vocals and okay. that's all. And then, and then the bass wants to be quite dry and the, dr the guitars, are, you know, they're such a massive, massive... They've, they've got so many effects themselves. Yeah. So there's no point of trying to add anything else. There, maybe if there was an acoustic guitar, I'd add a little bit of reverb or even chorus so once i've done that the next thing i'm gonna do is something which is a little bit unorthodox which is i'm gonna not have the bass going to the main left right what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn off the stereo outputs for this bass and i'm gonna send it to a bus let's say to bus number eight so we're gonna send that to Eight. Okay, and then I'm going to name this so I don't get lost. So let's say this is going to be red for bass, and then make this red, and go find the bass icon. Okay, and what I'm going to do now, the third DCA will be this bus. The bus with the bass, okay? And the reason I'm going to do that is 
because I'm going to be able to compress the bass on its individual channels but I'm going to have on the bus another compressor that I'm going to use to sidechain the bass with the kick drum just because it's such an intense type of music, metal I'm, I'm going to want to have a possibility of the kick drum coming out from the bass guitar that will also allow me to have the bass louder than I'd normally be able to so now we're going to have maybe guitar I'm not sure, I'm going to leave four for now so now I'm going to want to have from 17 to 20, I'll do vocals. What I'm gonna do is also turn off the main output. And I'm gonna stick them through an interesting effect, which I don't think anyone apart from me uses on this mixing desk, which is a multi-compressor. The this one that you can use side chain with? Or no, no, one. this is basically a five, five band. I'll show you how it looks. Okay, so all the vocals are going to go through this and that's mainly for me to be able to compress the vocals at a few stages. So, so I'm going to set... Multi-band compressor. Like Multi-band compressor, exactly. Uh, and we're going to set it so that when, when a lot of guys sing, it's going to duck it quite drastically. So I'm going to have some compressor on each channel, plus I'm going to have compression on the bus and with this, so I'm going to basically on each vocal be using three compressors, but each one quite mildly, and I just find that a little bit of a better way of doing it than just having one but set to drastic settings. Okay, so one thing I like doing is with vocals, I'd like to be able to have a, a mix for the monitors separate from the mix that comes out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, the, each one of these four channels to the four next channels. So 17 will also appear here. So that's when I said you can reroute stuff in different ways on this mixing desk. So this is one of the, the things you can do. So, so you're basically like layering the sounds. It, it, it will appear twice. Okay. So I can have one EQ settings and different compression settings here, and then also different here. And I can have this one going out front and these only going to monitors. The reason wh why I do that is because for monitors, you don't really want to compress that much. True, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and for the front of house, you do, uh, for various reasons. It's unlike music production, where sometimes you want to layer the sound to have a thicker sound. Yeah, effect. you kind of do that. Like, we'll do that with bass today, and we'll do that with kick drum. All oh, right. Yeah, with bass, we're going to have two inputs for bass. One from the D DI, which is a very kind of clean, dry sound. And we're going to have a microphone also micing up the amplifier. We're going to combine those two. So yes, we're going to do that to a degree. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to send all of these four to a bus, to a stereo bus. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link these two so I've got kind of these as a stereo pair. And then here, I'm going to turn off the stereo outputs for these four. And I'm going to send these to a subgroup. 9-10. So you basically put them in mono, right? To put them together in one channel. Uh, they, they, are mo mono. they are mono. They are mono. Yeah, but this allows me to have, for example, one pan this way and the other one, for example, pan that way, and then on the bus they appear like that. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is this 910, we're gonna stick this effect, this compression, th this combiner on it. So we're gonna go 910, yeah? So now this, this fader, which is FX4 right and left these this is where our vocals end up so this is what we're going to put on the DCA so let's say we're going to do D DCA number six for vocals and then we're going to do seven for reverb for vocals and eight for the del for delay all right we're going to change the settings of those in a second let me just name this so that one needs to be you know, I'm very confident when I'm talking about this, but sometimes I end up, you know, going, doing this and then having to go back and checking what I've done wrong. So 
I might sound confident, but I'm so, I'm I'm not that much. <laughs> it's a normal part of the process. Yeah. So now we've got two left for guitars and something, but I just want to see what they're going to show up with. I wish there was two more. <laughs> I wish there was ten DCA groups. I find that's that would be perfect. All right. Can you show us how you operate it with the phone? Yes. So we just got a normal. Or a 2.4 gig uh, modem which goes into this output here which says remote control okay so what, what that's going to allow us to do is communicate with this computer there's like a this is a program that allows you to edit all of this via Wi-Fi so we need first we need to find that okay so we go set up it sees it here so that so it sees this you go so we want the information from the mixer to go to the PC okay so now if you have a look on the, this fader I can move it uh, or can I Oh, it's here. <laughs> now. Yeah. So it just it represents the... So this mixing desk is now virtual. I'm roughly set up for how I like stuff. Now we need to wait for the bands to arrive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 